It's time now for a special end of year movie spotlight. Instead of reviewing some of the latest releases at the Korean box office and online, we're going to look back at the year in Korean cinema, and then our critics will announce their picks for best film, best director, actor, and supporting actor of the year. So let's bring those critics in now. First, I have to my right, Jason Beshevace. Jason, hello. Hello, Jango. And to my left, we have Darcy Paquette as well. Darcy, hello. Hi, Jango. So, gentlemen, we're doing a sort of end of year awards ceremony. Then the Korea 24 Film Awards, if you will, if my <laughs> uh, memory serves me correctly. We skipped it last year, so this is a return of sorts. Now, before we get into the winners of the awards this year, Jason, perhaps you can first sum up what kind of year it's been for us, uh, for the industry as well. It seems to have been a bit of a mixed bag this year, shall we say, although the numbers have been much better than last year. Uh, we're still spending much, we were still spending much of the year emerging from the shadow of the pandemic and the numbers are still well below the pre-2020 levels, right? That's right. So it's been a complex year uh, in terms of the figures. It swung from recovery one month to a drop in the figures the next. Uh, the Roundup, of course, starring Madon Suck and also produced by him, um, got the industry back on track in May with a whopping 12.7 million emissions. <laughs> And uh, that, you know, generated a lot of enthusiasm um, and, you know, optimism. But the summer was a disappointment with the lacklustre Alienoid, directed by Che Dung un Emergency Declaration. Um, but, you know, Hansen, um, Confidential Assignment 2, Hunt, The Witch Part 2, they did, did okay, modest business. Mm. Uh, many of, many of uh, these films, of course, are sequels, or in the case of Hansen, it's a prequel. Um, and uh, there were some surprise hits, uh, The Night Owl uh, and also 645. Uh, but films like Confession, even Decision to Leave, I, you know, they're really well received, but uh, I would say they under, underperformed, at least if you compare it to how the films would have done pre-pandemic. Mm. Uh, films are playing for longer, uh, opening weaker. Top Gun Maverick was such a case. In terms of the number of tickets sold, 986.3 million tickets sold in the first 11 months, uh, which is up 89.3% on last year, but or the same period of last year. But uh, worryingly, they account for 48.3% of tickets sold in 2019. So, you know, higher ticket prices, uh, streaming services are keeping people at home still. Right. Streaming, it seems, uh, might have had a particularly significant factor as uh, so many people, of course, signed up for streaming services during the pandemic. And also the uh, distinction between TV series and films are being blurred as well. Would you agree with that, Darcy? And has the industry changed of good then? Also, how do you describe the year in uh, Korean film this year? OK, I mean, I'd I'll start by saying that the industry never really stops changing. Like it's always a, a process of changing, but you know, certain things will come along that'll kind of push that pace of change a bit faster. And certainly the pandemic was a really kind of skewed situation that, that pulled a lot to the, you know, the streaming services and uh, in terms of the format, you know, away from the feature film and towards the, the series as mm. the, the popular format. Um, and, you know, in order to bring that back, I mean, we do need a full recovery in the th theaters, and we haven't had that yet. Uh, one of the things that's in interesting about the, you know, the relationship between these two is that it's often the same people going back and forth, whereas before the pandemic, uh, you did have more of a kind of a OTT community or a TV community, right. mm. and then a film community mm. with, you know, some people who, you know, particularly actors who went back and forth, but... Um, these days, a lot of directors are kind of trying their hand at both, and they're discovering that you know there are some advantages to to TV. There are some things that they miss about film. Um, you know, long term, I think it's still kind of up in the air exactly how this is all going to play out in the end. Mm. Um, but you know, financially, so much money is in the the OTT corner. That, um, I mean, that's undeniably having an effect and it continues to have an effect. And even though, I mean, Netflix is losing momentum in the US, for example, to a certain extent, um, not so much in Korea because Korea has this big international market that it's been taking advantage of. So, so yeah, I mean, the, I mean, that's the other big trend is that, you know, internationally, there is a lot more economic potential than there ever has been before. 
Uh, so we're all just sort of waiting to see where where the pieces fall. But sure, yeah. The conclusion is everything is continuing to evolve as it always has done. Okay, let's turn to the awards now. Jason, can you quickly tell us how you decided on these uh, winners for best film, best director, actor, and supporting? Sure. So there's uh, a group of critics, including ourselves, who are very much part of the show: mm. uh, Molly Kim, Mark Raymond. And Piers Conran, and uh, together, yeah, we voted on each of the categories. So, best film, uh, best director, actor, and supporting actor. And you know, quite simply, the, the final winner was you know the one with the most votes. <laughs> <laughs> Not really very complicated. <laughs> okay, but it was a collective vote with yes. our panel of critics. So, Darcy, then kick us off with best supporting actor. Who was our panel's pick for best supporting actor? I mean, we had a number of different. You know, films or actors who receive votes, but we sl- selected Nana for her role in the the thriller Confession, uh, which is a, a remake of a Spanish film directed by Yoon Jung Sok. And you know, she's one of many singers who have been very successful in moving into acting, uh, like Imuna and others. And you know, in Confession, she plays this young woman who's involved in an extramarital affair and a hit-and-run accident. Uh, it's one of these films where we see kind of different scenarios play out on screen. And so even though she's playing the same role, she has to kind of show different sides of herself in mm. this one performance. And she did it so well. <laughs> I think a lot of people were really impressed by that. Uh, and in general, you know, I think she just has a lot of momentum behind her these days. Uh, she had a big part in the series Glitch, directed by No Doc. And she will be back next year in the Netflix series Mask Girl. So uh, we'll continue to see her on the screen. So the singer and actor Nana is uh, picked for Best Supporting Actor for her performance in Confession or Chabek in Korean. Jason, any additional thoughts on the winner before we move on? Yes, uh, you know, I watched the film uh, a few months ago, I heard good things about it. And uh, yeah, I mean, she's shone in the film. The film actually is really quite good. Um, I, I, you know, it's really engaging. Uh, but her performance was, uh, it resonated and uh, it was surprisingly good. And uh, I say surprisingly, uh, because actually, you know, when I, I see K-pop stars making that transition, you know, I, I, some of them work, some of them don't. Mm. And uh, sh- she works you know, really well in film and also in series. I'm very keen to see what she gets up to next. Uh, lots of layers in that performance. Uh, just really engaging film. And a big reason for that was her her role in it. OK, now on to Best Actor. Back to you, Jason. Drum roll. <laughs> Who <laughs> has been selected? Yeah, uh, this one was a difficult one. Again, we had a, you know, a few different uh, potential candidates here. Uh, but in the end, we decided on... Are you uh, again a singer uh, that's made that transition? Um, you know, Ejian uh, for her quite, you know, frankly stunning performance uh, in Hirokazu Creator's Broker. Uh, you know, ever since the film premiered in Cannes in May, uh, she stood out for playing a mother who leaves her baby at a uh, baby box uh, at a church. Uh, and so, yeah, like I say, another uh, singer. What's really impressed me about IU is the decisions that she's made. Mm. Uh, she's obviously been h- hugely famous in Korea for what well over you know a decade, uh, and so she could have easily got big parts in big films, but she didn't. She kind of uh, started in short films and you know independent movies, and of course she's acted in dramas. But, you know, her journey into kind of feature movies has been a slow one. And she's made some really, really smart moves, including uh, starring in this film. So, uh, yeah, she's got a lot of talent going forward. Um, and I think she could be, you know, a major figure in the film industry going for, yeah, going ahead. Indeed, Darcy, I understand that you wrote the English subtitles for this film. So I'm sure you watched her performance closely. What did you take away from it? Yeah, I mean, it is um, it is a strong performance. Uh, this is a, a film that's divided audiences a little bit in Korea. Uh, but but I do like the film. It's um, And she's really at the very center of the film. You know, it's um, before the film came out, you know, I looked at the cast and I figured, okay, Song Kang Ho, Kang Dong Wan, and Bae Do Na. And, uh, I was surprised that in, in many ways, you know, it's her performance that's at the center of the mm. film and that holds things together. And you know, it's a lot of responsibility to take on a role like that. And she, 
you know, clearly was ready for it. So, uh, like Jason, I'm looking forward to seeing kind of more acting from her in the future. Sure, she held her own against those uh, acting greats in cinema, uh, Korean cinema as well. So, are you? Uh, winner for best actor for this year. Year. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now moving on to uh, best director. Back to you, Darcy. Who was chosen this year? Okay, we went with the debut director this time, and it's Kim Sein for her debut film, The Apartment with Two Women, uh, which is a really intense film about the relationship between a mother and daughter, a very fraught relationship between the two of them. And the film premiered in Busan last year in the New Current section, and it won an award there. It traveled to a lot of different film festivals, including Berlin and Edinburgh and Udine. Uh, and then it was released in in theaters here um, this fall, and it's attracted a lot of attention because you know there's a real intensity to the film. Mm. Uh, you can there's a real kind of intelligence behind the filmmaking as well. Um, she doesn't take the obvious choices about how to present things. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, people are, uh, really curious to see what she does next. She's just 30. She graduated from Korea's top film school. She makes me very, very envious. <laughs> <laughs> Make us all feel a bit old. Yes. Okay. So the best director goes to Kim Sein for The Apartment with Two Women. Uh, Jason, I remember, uh, from your review when it was, re- when it was released just last month, you too were very fond of this film oh yeah it's terrific uh, what a debut just so well directed so well written she gets these incredible performances uh she's clearly a major talent uh, going forward in terms of directing um yeah i'm very keen to see what she gets up to next uh she's raised raised the bar pretty high <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'll be curious to see whether she you know moves into kind of uh commercial films or even mini series she's clearly going to be approached by you know a lot of producers because she's just incredibly talented right so kim tain a name to look out for okay we now come to the highlight the best korean film of 2022 what has our panel of critics chosen jason what is the korean film of 2022 it has to be decision to leave you know uh, i think i don't think many people will be surprised to hear that pak chung's master masterwork just oh, i mean wow it's uh was it a unanimous decision among oh, the panel? Yeah, it was everyone yeah it was easy <laughs> it was easy it's it's uh yeah, i think it's one of his best films uh it's it, yeah these directors they keep yeah the, i say direct you know these uh korean authors you know pak chang bong jino Yi chang dong now jin you know they're just producing some of their best best films they perfected their craft and um you know their films are traveling overseas in a big way now um and the writing uh yeah, the directing it's beautiful it's funny it's got so many layers to it um uh yeah no it's 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 very pachanguk uh it's also very hitchcock um but but he very much does his own thing um and the performances are fantastic uh, i've only seen it once i'm eager to see it again uh but yeah it's by far the best film of 2022 Darcy, this was another film that you translated the subtitles for. What was it like to work on this film and see it premiere, can win Best Director, then attract Oscar buzz? Does it bring back perhaps memories of uh, Parasites and the run that film made back in 2019 as well, which you translated as well, of course? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it does. Um, it does remind me a bit of Parasite, just in the sense that, you know, this is a a really accomplished film that, um, in the past, I think, you know, if it had been released 10 years ago, then uh, probably wouldn't have had quite the international uh, reception that it does now. Uh, Parasite really kind of bulldozed a door <laughs> into, the, into the international market. And, uh, you know, so this film, it's, you know, it's a really amazing film. It, it's in some ways a little perhaps hard to market mm. um, or, you know, it's not an easy film to understand always in the first viewing and uh, but but it's so beautifully done and it's so kind of romantic and engaging and it makes you want to watch it multiple times just mm. to mm. so that you can uh, it kind of catch def- all the details. It kind of defies genre as well. A little bit. It really does. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Pakil is a detective like no other detective in a Korean <laughs> film I've ever seen. <laughs> 
Okay, so that was decision to leave or h e j i l k y o l s h i m in Korean by Park c h a n u k That is a Korean film of 2022. A worthy winner indeed. <laughs> so that wraps up our review of 2022. Let's squeeze in a quick review, preview, sorry, of 2023 before we go. Jason, looking ahead to next year, what are you looking forward to? Any predictions for how the industry will shape up, very briefly? Yeah, um, it'd be interesting to hear what Darcy thinks. But Im s u n l e s Point Man, that's released in January. Very uh, keen to see that. First time a, film, a female director has helmed a feature with a budget of 15 billion won or more. We've got Ye Young's colonial f- film uh, Phantom as well. Curious to see Kim Sung Soo's Soul Spring about the events in the late 1970s. Uh, there's a big uh, bottleneck of, of releases, uh, around 80 or so. So I, th- I think we'll see some films head to streaming platforms. The match, of course, starring Lee Byung-hun and Yoo Ae-in will be released on Netflix. Um, in the summer, we've got some, potentially some big films. Kim Sung-hun's Ransom, set in Beirut, uh, and Kim y o n g w a s uh, The Moon. And speaking of sci-fi, y o n Sang-hoo's uh, Netflix film j u n g i drops on service in January. And I think there's an interesting sci-fi trend going on sure. in Korean content at the moment. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see how that kind of um, manifests over the next uh, 12 months. Uh, and Darcy mentioned how... A lot of directors are kind of migrating into miniseries and back again into film. And we've got a lot of uh, di- film directors helming series, including Shin y u n s h i k Uh, Uncle Sam Shik starring Song Gang Ho in his, his first drama I think and a whole number of other series directed by uh, filmmakers so it's going to mean it's, it's going to mean it's going to be very busy for me because <laughs> you know fa- trying to yeah w- watching one series I have to I have to sure. find a week you know uh, whereas with a movie I, it's just two hours so uh, it's going to be a busy year t- 2023 indeed we look forward to it We'll wrap it up there. Jason Darcy, thank you for that roundup and for all your reviews this year as well. Our thanks goes out to our other critics, Mark, Molly and Pierce, for their contributions as well. Thank you. Gentlemen, we hope you have a great end of the year and see you back in 2023. Yes, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Take care.